Hello my viewers, welcome back to the channel. And by the video title, you know what this video is about. The Steelers and Eagles game, post-game review. And this game right here was just, it was just a bad game. It was just a bad game, another bad game. You kind of feel, you, you kind of had a little hope a little bit coming into the game. Maybe you can like, you know, fly under the radar a little bit. And maybe be an underdog and come in with no, you know, nothing to lose really. And just go out there and try to win it. But it's like they just didn't want to go out there and try to win it. The game, um... You know, it's a lot. First of all, let's break it down through quarter. I'm gonna go through the quarters like I always do, quarter to quarter, and get to some things I want to talk about. So in the first quarter, I feel like the offensive play calling, you know, it was too many screens, a lot of screens. It was a lot of um, it's, it's a lot of short stuff like dump offs and short passes, and like we, we didn't we like we didn't throw the ball to the sticks. Everything was like underneath. Everything was like a screen. The ball, Deontay Johnson had a screen pass on the left side that got about 10 yards, something like that, 10 or 12 yards. But besides that. Everything was really just bad, like short under. I remember later in the game, Steven Sims had a screen where I think that they really had a pick six almost, like the way the cornerback got there so fast. Like, you kind of, it's kind of predictable. You can kind of tell when they're coming too a little bit. The way we run them, you kind of run like the little stack formation a little bit, and you just see the receiver just twisting over looking, and then he'll get the ball, and he'll just try to make something that, make something out of nothing really. But we, we got to start pushing the ball downfield. We say it every week, so it's a broken record. I'm tired of saying it. Everybody's tired of saying it. But later in that first quarter, we did have a good drive, a good drive down the field. We start pushing the ball down the field, start throwing on early downs instead of being the same run, run, pass. We start doing more and just start saying, okay, you know, we're going to throw the ball early downs. We're going to throw it on first down. We're going to mix it up a little bit, throw it on second down. We're going to run on third. Occasionally, we're going to run on second. We're going to mix it up and, and to change the pattern and make it too predictable for teams to just pick up, pick on to you. And we uh, went down there. And it was a nice play call by Matt Canada in the goal line with the Clay pool on fourth down and a toss to Derek Wyatt, which was the only was actually the only touchdown of the game, and then that touchdown pass came from a receiver, not the quarterback himself. And then the defense in that first quarter, yeah, it was it was um it was it was bad. AJ Brown was just dominating them, and that play that he had, um, it, it really the, the pass wasn't even contested because Minka Fitzpatrick like like he had good uh good spot on it, had good like he was tracking it well, and then when the ball like kind of came down a little bit, it was just bad. It was just bad, like, um, like ball vision, really, because it came down. AJ Brown got it in both hands, and they really didn't, they really didn't contest it too much. And Edmonds was on the other side, kind of like not looking, or looking back or anything. And then Brown just brought it in. Uh, like I said before in the preview, Brown is a elite level receiver on the outside. He's a very dominant receiver, a very strong receiver. He he, he loves it. He, he plays with aggression. He plays physical, and he plays he plays tough like that. So you're gonna have to. Either come in with a hit or play, get physical with them, match the physicality. But we did not do that today, as you've seen, because he had, what, three touchdowns. And then, just like in the second quarter, the cornerbacks were just getting beat. I think Killer Willispoon got beat by um, A.J. Brown as well. He just threw one up. It's a beautiful pass by Jalen Hurts on the, um, on the right side of him over the shoulder where only he can get it. But Killer Willispoon, had, he kind of had good footing on it a little bit, but he just couldn't get his head around the look. And A.J. Brown just brought it in again. It was just too easy. And he got hit by Minka, but that hit didn't do anything to AJ Brown. But um, and also another thing too, I've seen the second quarter. I've been seeing for the past, probably for the past, probably since the beginning of the week, beginning of the season, really. Um, Najee Harris is not 100. percent You can just tell Najee Harris is not 100. percent Look like coming him coming to the season. Remember they said they hit that Liz Frank injury. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right. I think Liz Frank injury, the little bone in your your foot like that, and they said it can cause. You know, there's a lot of lot of, lot of pain when you try to like put weight upon it like that. So basically, and you know his play style, as most running backs play style, like that. Of course, you need explosion. You need explosion. You need that power, especially Najee Harris, that like, being that size, that 240 pounds, you need that power and that size and explosion. And last year we see Najee Harris take some two dump offs and just turn them to some big plays. This year we see Najee kind of do that, and and like you can, like you know he can do it too. It's just like you can tell, it's just like he's not 100. percent He said he played with a metal plate in his um cleats. A couple weeks ago, and so like that, saying he's 100. percent But if you're 100, percent you're not gonna put a metal plate in your cleats. You just go out there, you know, like that. Tip your foot up and go out there. But I think Najee Harris should have been probably he probably should have set out the first three, four weeks like that to make sure that he was fully um, healthy because they said the injury was pre looked pretty bad in preseason like that in the training camps area because like I said, like he um kind of he kind of got up, he can he could barely walk himself off the field like he didn't put no pressure or weight on it, and he was out for a, a while. And they said he's gonna start week one. I was like, okay, and then he kind he came in there and he used them here and there. And as you can see, how the Steelers kind of run the ball here and there different times, they don't really run it a lot, and that's probably why too as well because they don't have the explosion. I wish he had run the ball more with Jalen Warren because Jalen Warren has the explosion. You see the gaps in the 
had back draws, how it was working like that. Najee started picking up a little bit at the end of the game, but it was a little too late. And the defense was playing a little back because, you know, they, they was up by three or four scores. But I think Najee Harris is not 100%. I feel like he's like probably like 70% maybe. He's probably still around 70%, but he's not 100%. You can just tell the way he's moving. You can tell the way his um, uh, he had that explosion, that second gear. When that one play on um, third down where he caught it, Usually we see Najee Harris catch the ball. He just goes straight, straight ahead, and he can beat the guy to the um to the edge. This time he caught it. He's got to make it do a juke, try to make them miss, and you can just tell like, like when you start thinking, when you start playing like that, you just know like you're not 100. percent You ever see like a player like, for instance, like Tom Brady. You know Tom Brady like, later in his career, when you see him like, actually the previous Thursday game, you know you don't take any hits when you get older and stuff like that because you know the complications of it, and you see him throw the ball, and he put his shoulder out like that, and kind of fall away throwing it, and you see some players, like when they hurt, you can tell when players hurt like that, they don't want to get in contact. Ben Simmons, in basketball, you see, like he said that, uh, reports said that Ben Simmons don't want to go in the paint or drive and be aggressive like that, like he usually, like he was a little bit in Philly, because he's scared of getting fouled, he's scared of getting getting hurt, because he's not, I don't think he's 100%. So, like, sometimes when you're not 100%, you play with that caution mindset, and that was to kind of make, it kind of make you get, it kind of make you get hurt worse, because you're playing that mindset, you're not playing with that, go, go get it, go get it mindset, you're playing with, like, the, like you're being cautious, and like, oh, I'm not going to step off this foot too hard, I'm not going to do that, I think, and, and you can kind of tell the way not just playing, he's not 100% at all. But the cornerbacks in that game, in our games, too, was they, they always getting beat. James Pierre did um, a solid job in the second half when he was playing on them. Now, Brown did have a 43-yard catch, but that was on the other side. But um, the cornerbacks in the game, was they was playing bad. And that's one thing I've been saying for the past for the past year, actually. Cause I, I was hoping the Steelers traded for Jalen Ramsey. When Jalen Ramsey was on the trade market and the Jaguars had him up there, I was like, oh, Steelers, you got to go get that guy. Get Imagine him. With Minka, TJ Watt, I mean, a couple of years ago, he was on the trade market. He's like, ooh, yeah, get that guy. And then the Rams got him. They traded, I think they traded like a first and some, some something else for him. I, think, I feel like the Steelers should have traded for him or they should have went, or they should have drafted a number one corner. Like, we haven't, had, we haven't had an elite level cornerback or a good or a Pro Bowl level cornerback really since Joe Hayden. Because Joe Hayden, when he was healthy at 2019 year, he made the Pro Bowl and, and his, his stint with us was actually pretty good. He actually was good, he was nice. And um, last year he was you no, know, he was injured last year, so it was kind of like the last his last season. He was injured, got a little older. But ever since, but we haven't had a Pro Bowl cornerback since since Hayden and before Hayden. I don't I don't even know when you know uh, the Steelers wouldn't have like those high level cornerbacks. Of course, you know the Ike Taylor days. Ike Taylor them was solid. He just couldn't catch the you know he just couldn't catch sometimes. I like a lot of drop interceptions, but Ike Taylor was solid. And you know you see guys like William Gay. He had some pick sixes in his career. It's a nice stuff. But you know we really haven't had like no like. I want us to go go out and get another Rod Woodson or something. Go out and get somebody who's elite level. Get somebody very dominant like that. Go go out there and get somebody who's gonna make it hard for defenses to throw on that side. Why do you have T.J. Watt and you have Minka in the backfield and Cam Hayward up front to make it to make the defense the best defense possible like that? I feel like the corner cornerback position, the DB position, has been a struggle for the Pittsburgh Steelers for the past probably six to seven years. Minka Fitzpatrick came in and. Kind of changed some of that stuff. Edmonds getting better over time. Changed some of the stuff a little bit, but it's still bad on the the outsides. We see a lot of different switches. We thought Kill Witherspoon was going to be the guy last year, and this year he's just getting beat almost every time. Jamar Chase got him, and you're like, maybe that's just one time. Kill Witherspoon, not Kill Witherspoon. Um, Nelson Aguilar got him. Like, okay, that's two times. Then you're like, oh, he got beat by um who else he got beat by? It was somebody else he got beat by? Ah, it was somebody else. I can't think of it right now, but let's think of somebody else he got beat by. But it's just been it's just been bad all over. Been bad. Oh, Amar Cooper. That's what it was. Yeah, Amar Cooper was tearing him up in that Thursday night game, jacking him up, and then AJ Brown. It was like he got beat by a lot of and like some of those plays were like just big time touchdowns. He got it was three big time ones. Like the Nessa Aguilar before halftime was a big one, and the, the AJ Brown one was a big one. It just and Jamar Chase was the one that almost won them the game. So it's been like some bad plays and him just getting beat. And the cornerbacks have not been good at all. And we should have challenged that play call too with um, George Pickens. We went up and caught it. Cause you you, you can't tell they caught it really. I was like, that's a catch right there, right? Cause you can like I thought I thought if I was looking at it initially, you think he like bounced off the ground. Then when you saw the replay, you like okay, he had it in his hands. And then just his hands touched the ground. I was like okay, and the ball just came out later. And we didn't challenge it. Luckily, we got the first down on the fourth on fourth down. But we really could have challenged that, you know, maybe get the catch on the. He's a young player, you know, young player building building confidence up. You challenge that play. So here's a catch and maybe build some momentum up with them because he really didn't catch anything the whole game. He had zero catches. He had a couple of targets, but he had zero catches on that. And then um in the third quarter, we we seen um just like the the bad read on defense with Edmonds. You know um when it's man to man defense, you can't do that. You can't um come and help. It's kind of like it's like in any sport really. In any sport you play or anything, you like if it's man to man, like okay you guard him, 
It can be in basketball, it can be in football. I don't know what sports use man to man defense, but like they'd be like, okay, you guard him, and I'm gonna guard him. I can't come over here and help. If I come over here and help somebody, it's eleven on eleven. It's not. It's not eleven on twelve. Nothing. Like it's eleven on eleven. So I come over there and help somebody. That make it. 10 on 11 then, because you got two people on one person, and then you see what happened. He just, he just uh, walked his way up on the sideline, wide open. Jalen Hurts been throwing a deep all game, so he was wide open touchdown, just walked in there. It was too easy. And, yeah, so it was just it was just bad. And then we see um, some missed P.I. calls, you know, here and there. Bradbury got his, was getting a little handsy here and there on some plays, but it didn't really matter because we wasn't going to do anything with it anyway. And then the offensive line penalties was just – Keep the momentum of each like each drive. You just see like we start getting some momentum a little bit. We're like okay, we getting some momentum. Like when the game was still seven seven, you like oh illegal shift. Oh holding. Oh and it was a man downfield. That's probably that's the main one right there. And it was a man downfield. We cannot run RPOs. The offensive line is not disciplined and enough. And the old line, the offense in general is not disciplined enough to run RPOs because once you. Cause first of all, the center got to make sure he pit it right on the money sometimes. Cause you get it like high up, you got to come back down and like do that. Some of those guys don't they don't they don't know and they don't sense they decided to run ahead. They think it's a run like that, but you gotta know the time. You got everybody being sync in time and time it uh, right. So when you like pull it back, then you have like time. Okay, maybe I can throw the ball fast. I, I gotta throw it fast to the um, primary receiver, and then the O line can get out there and do what they do. But when the O line is um like you trying to hand it off to them, you gotta you gotta make sure like, you gotta like, you gotta be in sync. Like RPOs gotta be in sync. The way you see some of the teams. They do it like, like the Eagles are doing it so well. You see how they all was in sync. Like Jalen Hurts will get it and hold it. The offensive line to hold, hold, and then they be like, okay, he's running it. We're gonna go, we're gonna go, go. And then you see him hold, hold, and then like, okay, he throwing it like that. So there's like, these different ways you do. You gotta be in sync. So I think we should just stick to the stuff we know because it's not working. One thing that did work though, the halfback draws was working pretty well in the game, but it just wasn't enough in the end. But and then after that fumble that Kenny Pickett had, we was driving down the field a little bit and like. Maybe if you score a touchdown there, you have some momentum coming in because it, it might be the score to get to twenty to um twenty eight, and you be like, okay, it's a one score game now. But after that fumble, we're like, yep, the game is over. The game is over right there. And then they went down the field. I think um Miles Sanders had that had that um run in. I believe it was Miles Sanders play. Yeah, the run in he had the rushing touchdown, and that ended the game. The game was over right there. So yeah, who's playing right now? Oh, the DJ Moore just caught the game winning touchdown for the Panthers. I wish that happened for us. <laughs> yeah, but um. Yeah, that, that was the end of the game. And overall, the summary of this game, I, I have my notes stuff. A lot, a lot of notes, a lot of notes. <laughs> um, The O-line played bad today. It was most, like, you know, the O-line was, you no, know, they still better than the O-line was, was, was last year. But it's just like the O-line, just the penalties. They're not disciplined enough. The penalties are just bad. The penalties are destroying us. And that's what really had the bad play. And can you, can, can you pick a dig get tackled a lot and get sacked? I mean, get sacked a lot. And can he have time on some of the stuff? But the penalties just... Held us back a lot. The defense was playing well back to back games against the Buccaneers, against the Dolphins. They came in holding the Dolphins to 16, holding the Buccaneers to 18, and playing like elite level defense. Playing like the defense that we wanted to see coming in. We like, okay, hold a team down to 16 and 18. Maybe maybe we might have a shot. I know our offense is the best scoring ever, but we may have a shot. We might have a shot to um, put up some points. But if you can get, if you can score 20 points on the Steelers, you're gonna win the game. Because if it's for some reason our offense can't put up more than 15 to 16 and the defense today is they allowed too much to happen like it was just too much it was just like too conservative early on it, the 21 points in the first half and then giving up some big plays like and it's like some common sense stuff too like you're like man why, why would you go help down low on the screen right there you had a guy the guy was already right there like that if, if he gets it i'd rather have him get like five or six yards on the screen then let them get a touchdown walking in the end zone untouched so yeah so we just had some bad you know like um communication on defense, on offense, everything. Everything was pretty bad this game. And that's why we were two and six. And I know the season not over yet, but I don't I don't know. You gotta, you gotta play the Saints. The Saints just shut out. Well I don't I'm thinking while I was talking the game, they was shutting out the Raiders. I don't know if the Raiders scored yet, but they was um locking them down. And you gotta play the Saints, you gotta play the um Bengals again, you gotta play the Ravens twice, you have to play the Browns again, and you also have to play the Raiders themselves. And then who else you gotta play? I think the Panthers and the Falcons and the Colts. So it's some it's still some tough games left in there. You still have a chance. It's still some games maybe you think, okay, the way our team is set up and the way their team's set up is kind of similar, may have a chance, but the way our offense is looking, I don't think so. And the defense, I know the defense get back on track here and there. Like they, they had a moments up and down, moments and stuff, but throughout the season they've probably been the brighter spot on our team. 
I thought the defense, but overall the team is just still still not good, still a bad team right now, and it's playing a bad season. I, you know, I, I've been a Steelers fan since 2007, you know. I started watching football more and more. So I've seen some bad seasons with the Steelers. I've seen some bad you know, some bad years, you know, you go like 8-8 eight and eight and stuff, and you know, some, you know, some seasons that like just not, they don't look too good. But um, I think 2019 year was probably one of the most exciting 8-8 eight eight years. Like, even though we went 8-8, eight and eight, like, we've seen like the Duck Hodges and the Del and uh, Mason Rudolph, and then all the crazy, um, the defense, the plays they were making, they let the league in turnovers and sacks. That was that was a crazy year right there. But I see some bad years, but I think this year might, this year right here might be probably the worst year I've seen as a Steeler fan. I seen I seen some bad ones, but this right here might be the worst ones. And I know some of you guys have still been Steeler fans since probably the '80s and '90s. I've seen some, y'all probably seen some crazy stuff. But this probably my my, my worst year, uh, of like seeing like probably the worst year I've seen as a Steeler fan, like. Is the team just look just look bad? I seen some years where we was like maybe like not up to not on par. We made like we on some losing streaks, but we still managed to like maybe win. You know, maybe muster out some stuff. Might go eight and eight, but you still see us like put some points up. But this right here just look bad. This is like we feel like a JV team out there. So hopefully it can get things situated. We say this every week, and most likely nothing will change because still don't really make changes within the season. You know, like, like, still stick to history, but sometimes you gotta change history. Sometimes you gotta go with what's the now. Like make a change, make a big change. Make a trade, do something, do some type of move, or make some type of move, make something happen, something in the organization, something in the coaching staff, something happen, something, some player personnel, something, do something that kind of like light a fire and get his team a chance. Cause there's still a lot of games left. Like they're not, they're not over yet fully. There's still a lot of games left to play. There's still a lot of games left. Um, we still got, you still got um, well, how many games is left actually? Cause you got the Ravens twice, you got the Browns, you got the Colts, you got the Saints, you have. The Bengals again, and you have the Panthers and the Falcons. I, I believe it's eight games left. I'm not mistaken. Yeah, eight games left. Oh, the Raiders. It's nine games left. Cause I forgot it's an extra game this season, like this like last year. But it's nine games left. Can, can you find a way to muster out and win six of them? Can you find a way to win six of those games or seven of those games like that? I don't know if you can. I don't really have high hopes in that. But hopefully do something. But that's all I got for this video today. If you like the video, leave a like and subscribe. And I'll see you guys probably on Monday for Can We Adjust because we lost again. Peace out.